Hey, combat sports fans, welcome to the Fight Network Studios. I'm your host, John Ramdean, and this is Fight News Now Extra. Robin Black will be joining me in a little bit to chat about the day's events. In the news today, DJ looks to defend his title for a third time in a rematch. The natural-born killer will be out to prove the immortal one is indeed mortal. An injury forces a former Strike Force champion out of his UFC 166 bout. Those are some of the stories of the day. Now we find out more. UFC flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson has a dance partner for his next fight. The 18-2-1 fighter is scheduled to face off with top-ranked Joseph Benavidez when they meet in a rematch from the UFC 152 encounter where Johnson garnered the split decision triumph and the inaugural title. Since the loss, Benavidez has won three straight, including stoppages in his previous two. The battle for the flyweight championship will go down on November 30th at the Mandalay Bay at the Ultimate Fighter 18 finale. And a fantastic welterweight pairing, former interim champion Carlos Condit is set to lock horns with surging Matt Brown when the two square off at UFC on Fox 9, which is set for December 14th in Sacramento, California. Condit rebound from back-to-back -back losses with a TKO victory over Martin Kampman last month, while Brown is on a tear winning six straight with five of those coming by TKO. Former Strikeforce 185-pound champion Luke Rockhold has been forced to withdraw from his UFC 166 bout against Tim Boach after suffering an undisclosed injury in training. In for the California-based fighter will be Ultimate Fighter alum C.B. Dalloway, who will be fighting for the second time in 2013. The event will go down at the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas on October 19th and features Cain Velasquez battling Junior DeSantos for the UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Joined now by Mr. Robin Black, and we got to talk about this awesome flyweight matchup between Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavidez, clearly the number one and number two 125-pound fighters in the world. And you go back and look at their first fight, split decision, and some people had uh, Benavidez winning that fight. I didn't. Do, uh, do you expect a very different Joseph Benavidez? As since we saw him losing that fight, uh, he has really been a different guy. Yeah, yeah, he's rabid, man. This kid looks really, really good. You're right. They're they're number one and number two. There's just no denying it. It's like Cain Velasquez and Ju Junior Dos Santos. These guys could meet a few more times in their life. There's less fighters at 125 pounds world wide and when two guys are this good you got to put them together again uh, for Benavidez you know you look at the entire team alpha male group they're really on fire right now each guy really wants to get a shot at the title not just a shot at the title they want to be champion uh, I had a chance to talk to Shane Campbell who won his fight in K1 Max who said he went down and trained with those guys and their philosophy is one of nobody will outwork these guys they really do what they have to inside the training mat so that they put forth a pressure that people can't handle. And I think that will be the key to victory for Joseph Benavidez. However, his counterpart kind of has that same mentality. Yeah, man, ah, Demetrius Johnson is such a great fighter and this is such a great fight. These guys won and got to the top of their divisions as a nobody will outwork us mentality based fighters. You know, uh, with great wrestling and great scrambles and great athleticism and hard work. Then we added a lot more technical striking and a head coach and suddenly they are truly world beaters. They could be the champs at 125, 135, 145. And this guy is the first guy to get the shot. Demetrius Johnson is so good, but this guy is right there. Uh, we talked in the past about uh, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Ludwig coming to Team Alpha Male. Uh, how will that impact this performance? You know, obviously uh, now Joseph Benavidez getting to work on specifics, work on details, work on technique. Uh, will that play a factor against Johnson? Yeah, it's all of that. The technique for sure. The, all of those those guys' techniques are so clean, and the strategy of how to use the techniques are so so good. But they were confident before, man, and now I think they've won six million four hundred and thirty-seven thousand two hundred and twelve fights in a row since Dwayne Bang Ludwig came there, and that that kind of confidence, that kind of absolute belief in themselves, their system, and their coach. That is tough to beat. When your guys have not lost since you got a new coach, and now one of you is fighting for the title, they've got close before the lot of them. Uri Faber's been a champion in the past, but this is his shot, and this is a great fight. Confidence dude. on a different level right yeah. now, you believe, for these oh. guys. Unreal. Like, they just won't believe that any of them can lose now, and history, modern history, has proven them right. I've uh, got to talk about this 170-pound matchup. Carlos Condit uh, taking on Matt Brown. Right off the hop, it's going to be fight of the night. Both guys move forward. Uh, Matt Brown really surging right now. Six straight victories against some good guys. Jordan Meehan, Mike Swick, Mike Pyle, really on fire right now. He, he believes that he's ready to take on George St. Pierre, but he's 
facing the elite of the elite. If he wins this fight, he, he can have it. George St. Yeah. Pierre. This fight is stupid, like with lots of O's, like eight <laughs> O's. It's stupid. It's so good. Like you've got a guy who, you, uh, you know, if Condit makes this fight pretty and like his last few fights, the, the way this genius. guy has moved, just, yeah. yeah, he's a physical genius. If he makes it pretty, he wins this fight. If Matt Brown makes it ugly, he wins this fight. He has the ability to make fights ugly and, and in ugly fights, he's the ugliest of the lot. This is so good, man. This is stop whatever you're doing. Cancel whatever you got to do. Sit on the couch with your friends and cold beer and watch this fight. And again, it's on Fox. And I think the UFC is doing the right things because it comes down to entertainment. So when people tune in for free on the biggest network or one of the biggest networks and they see guys like Carlos Condit and Matt Brown who just really go after it. These are not guys that, I mean, I know Carlos Condit in his fight with George St. Pierre and his fight with Nick Diaz has to play a points game. You know, when you're fighting the cream of the crop, you have to do that. But against the, the guys that are just under that, he really tries to destroy. And I think Matt Brown, I, I know Carlos Condit will believe that his style will beat Matt Brown's style. He'll use his aggression against him. He'll use his counter strike and hopefully, I, I believe, I'm sure he's going to go for the knockout. Yeah, it is impossible to, you know, slow things down with Matt Brown. It's just not possible. You, you, tr you know, you try to quicksand, but he knocked out a guy named Quicksand. I mean, you just can't do it. He's going to put it on you. So you're better off to be sliding out on angles and counterpunching him and smashing his legs and stuff. You know, Condit has a great ground game, and we'll see some of it. But in his last fight, he looked so dominant on the feet against a guy who is also dominant on the feet. He will be fearless in this one. It's so good, man. The thing about Carlos Condit also is that you talk about how intelligent he is. He's got a lot of submission victories, and we've seen that's where Matt Brown loses. I think either way, it is going to be one for the ages and one that fans are absolutely going to love. With that said, more fight news now extra is coming your way.